So we are really excited to see uh, projects such like uh, Kubeflow uh, that brings together machine learning and Kubernetes um, and how they can really uh, boost AI productions in the uh, real world. Um, however, um, while bringing machine learning from a lab to reality, and there's one essential step that is uh, we really need to understand how uh, our software and the hardware stack uh, performs uh, under expected workloads. And uh, also we want to know uh, how can we uh, plan the right amount of resources for uh, the desired jobs that we want to run. And in order to do that, uh, we need to use benchmarks to, pro uh, to provide uh, useful performance information uh, from both uh, system side and the machine learning model side. And we have seen that um, uh, Kubernetes and the Kubeflow have provided a great uh, platform um, for machine learning jobs to run on. Uh, however, um, right now, uh, there's no uh, straightforward way to run benchmarks jobs. Um, on Kubernetes, and uh, um, it is not very easy uh, to run benchmark jobs on Kubernetes today. And for uh, for example, there are lots of uh, manual steps involved in this process, um, such like you have to um, prepare your data manually, and you have to create your Kubernetes resources. You have to uh, copy uh, all the results and outputs from your containers, and you also need to take care of uh, rerunning your benchmark experiments. So all those manual steps are preventing us to, uh, from running uh, good benchmarks. And here by good benchmarks, I mean there are actually lots of requirements uh, for a benchmark to be good. For example, uh, we need to make sure that, say we run 100 experiments, we need to make sure all of our experiments um, can keep compliance uh, to certain standards. And we want to make sure that all of our workloads um, and all, the whole benchmarking process are consistent so that our results can be reproducible. And given all those requirements, uh, we built KubeBench on top of Kubeflow. And basically, uh, KubeBench is a harness for benchmarking and analyzing machine learning workloads on Kubernetes. Um, and the goal of uh, KubeBench, I think there are two main direction, dimensions. Uh, one is that we want to support benchmarking in uh, various scenarios. Um, for example, we want to uh, be able to run benchmarks in multi-cloud. Uh, we don't want to be logged into a single cloud provider. Um, also, we want to, um, we have uh, data scientists that using different machine learning frameworks, such like uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and even MXNet, etc. So a good benchmark suit should be able to support a different benchmark, uh, different machine learning frameworks. And also, uh, when we run large-scale training jobs, uh, we, we would like to understand uh, our system performance uh, on the distributed workloads. So uh, the second dimension is that we want to um, use KubeBench to help users to uh, manage benchmark jobs easier. Uh, for example, how we can keep our workloads consistent and how we can get uh, uh, reproducible results. And also one important part is that uh, how can we make the benchmark uh, as a part of uh, the whole machine learning lifecycle? So how can we make it uh, fully integrated into the lifecycle instead of a, a separate tool that you use, uh, a standalone tool that you use separately? Um, so given all those requirements, um, here is the tech stack that we choose. So let me uh, start from the bottom. Um, so from the infrastructure side, uh, we, use, we look at the uh, uh, cloud-based infrastructures uh, that are both um, public and on-premise private clouds. And on top of that, uh, we have Kubernetes um, for container orchestration. I guess we, do, we don't need to introduce Kubernetes here. And on top of Kubernetes, there's a Kubeflow uh, for um, deploying and managing the lifecycle of uh, machine learning jobs. Um, and Kubebench uh, adds a thin layer on top of Kubeflow that provides uh, some benchmark-specific uh, functionalities, such like uh, managing the configs and the results of your uh, machine learning jobs, and also uh, how to uh, develop the workflow for the benchmarks. Um, this is a deeper look uh, into the Kubebench architecture. 
So uh, the yellow part is the functionality that uh, is provided by KubeBench, and uh, um, the blue part is um, what is user-defined. So uh, let's look at the blue part first. So what, as a user, uh, what you need to provide is um, basically the main codes that runs in your, uh, in your machine learning job that is to be benchmarked. And also you need to provide a little bit more codes that process your outputs to get uh, benchmark numbers. Um, so that is the main thing provided by user. Um, and what's provided by KubeBench is uh, first, uh, one of the main thing is that we provide a workflow uh, on the left side. Uh, we, we implement this workflow using Argo, and uh, there are three main steps. So one is the configuration step that uh, it takes in a user's configurations, job configurations, uh, and turn it into uh, a description of a KubeFlow job. So um, a KubeFlow job is uh, description is like a high-level description of uh, machine learning tasks uh, in YAML style. And uh, uh, in the second step here, we just uh, deploy this uh, Kubeflow job using by using Kubeflow's API. And uh, we wait for the job to complete. And finally, uh, once the job is finished, we have a reporter uh, that uh, collects all the results from uh, all your benchmark jobs. And uh, it exports the results to some external data storage so that you can persist your benchmark results. Um, <laughs> And here we also provide a storage layer that uh, provides some shared storage. Um, for example, if you have some benchmark configs and you have some data, and uh, we also need to have uh, a storage to store all those um, uh, benchmark records. So um, the storage layer will provide a shared storage that can be easily used to share information between uh, the user-defined workload and the KubeBench workflow. And also on the right side, uh, we have this monitoring part. Uh, we use Prometheus to collect all the uh, metrics um, from the benchmark jobs. And also we use Grafana to visualize the, uh, the, 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 the metrics. And finally, we have uh, interface, uh, dashboard, and some API that help you to uh, interact with KubeBench easier. Um, and here is how uh, KubeBench looks like uh, from user's perspective. So there are two kinds of users. Um, I think uh, one is the job developer. So um, as you have seen in the previous slides, for job developer, what you really need to provide is the codes that runs in the benchmark job and also some, some extra codes to uh, process your results. And uh, a KubeBench will provide this shared storage. So um, if you run a distributed job, all the, all the, um, the, 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 we will automatically mount the volumes to your job ports so that uh, you, can, uh, you don't need to worry about, um, say, copying results and outputs from your ports. And uh, from uh, experiment runner's point of view, um, what you need to provide is basically a, a job configuration and the job configuration is, uh, consists of two parts. One is the uh, job template, and uh, one is the parameter files. So um, a template is in case on it format right now, and it basically defines, uh, it's, it's kind of a job description with some configurable uh, variables, and uh, the parameter file basically defines the actual value of those uh, parameters. And, uh, um, you can just give those to uh, to Cookbench, and we'll run this uh, benchmark jobs, and you will be able to uh, see the results from dashboard or um, uh, visualizations. Um, Here is where we are today. Um, so we have uh, just re released our first uh, release, uh, v.3, along with Cookflow, and uh, uh, for the first release, uh, we provide some simple functionalities. Uh, such like uh, we, we can support local and distributed training workloads, and we can support uh, two frameworks right now, uh, that is uh, TensorFlow job and PyTorch job, and we are planning to support more in the future. Um, and for um, results aggregation, we are able to uh, aggregate results in a file system, and uh, uh, we will soon support uh, cloud database-based um, uh, result aggregation. And also, we provide end-to-end uh, um, -end a simple example for your 
uh, new users to get quick started. And we have a uh, TensorFlow uh, CNN example that comes with it. Um, and in, uh, in upcoming releases, uh, we are going to add a bunch of uh, new features here. And uh, uh, one is the dashboard and the results and metrics visualizations. And uh, one is the, uh, we are planning to formalize our API using Kubernetes CRD. And also, um, we are planning to support more uh, benchmarking scenarios. For example, um, we want to support uh, serving and inference benchmarks. And we also want to be able to run uh, large scale workloads uh, and to benchmark those workloads. Um, now, let me show a demo of Kubebench. Um, the demo would be a more like a preview of the features that we are going to upstream very shortly. And by the way, uh, I want to thank Kiro and Andre for putting up this demo. Um, uh, so, so this is the dashboard of Kubebench, and uh, um, there are two ways to launch a benchmark job right now. Uh, you can either give a, um, a YAML file like this. Um, so the YAML file will take full uh, advantage of all the functionalities of Kubebench, or you can use this kind of uh, wizard that will just give you a few options, and you can just input some um, like something uh, basic information like where to find your job image, uh, where to find your configurations, and you can just launch a benchmark job here. So here we launched uh, four benchmark jobs here. And in this panel, uh, you can see all the jobs being launched. Uh, you can do some basic filterings to manage the job. Um, and here you, we can uh, click on this job and uh, uh, in the workflow button, uh, it will bring you to the uh, Argo dashboard that will show the workflow of this benchmark. And uh, um, here you can keep track of the progress of all your benchmark jobs. And if something goes wrong, you can delete the job and it will be updated instantly in uh, this Argo. So we are just waiting for the completion. Yeah, so uh, looks like the job has been completed here. And uh, uh, we can go back to the dashboard and see uh, the metrics collected uh, during the benchmarks. So we click on the uh, metrics button, and that will bring you to the uh, Grafana dashboard. And uh, here you will see um, all the metrics collected uh, for this particular benchmark. And here you we, we can see that we run uh, four workers here. And you can see the, uh, the, the metrics collected from all those four workers, worker ports. And finally, we can check out um, the shared storage uh, where all the benchmark uh, uh, records are kept. Um, so uh, here you can see um, the list of benchmarks uh, ex examples. And you click on a particular example. And it will show all the configs of this benchmark and uh, the output of all the workers. And it will also show you uh, the, the, the results of um, this benchmark, so that will be all persisted in this shared storage. So uh, this is the demo, um, and so now I will give time to uh, Gauter, and he will give a case study of uh, benchmarking machine learning workloads on Kubernetes. Thank you very much. So I'm from Taiyuan Cloud in Gaozhou. So next, I would like to introduce a case study using Kubebench. 
open source project to solve some of the issues that we face during the production. It is actually a case study. As we all know, when we are using Kubernetes to operate business, we would more or less in、uh, face. Issues because of latency or other issues, some difficulties happened. Some overhead difficulties happened to our business because of the latency or other issues. When we are using machine learning or model training project, if we are if that is based on Kubernetes, then overhead well this overhead will influence the speed and rate of our the, of our training. So we use Kubebench and OpenFlow to do the benchmark. So let's look at the local training benchmark on single machine model training job. How、uh, let's look at the overhead on the training speed. How the overhead influence on the training speed. So we use TensorFlow benchmark to. Focus on five different training models on the single machine training. You can see the Inception,、uh, ResNet 50, and ResNet 150, AlexNet, and VGG. So as you can see here, in each models, it has six different lines. On the first bar,、uh, Inception V3, first and second lines, based on the batch size equals 32. And then we do the training model, the training speed. The first、uh, row using native TensorFlow to train, and the training speed. And the second row is actually on Kubernetes, the training speed comparisons. In the meantime, on each row, there are two colors. The darker ones and the light, lighter ones. The lighter colors represent one GPU training speed, and we're using two GPU to train. Then it was represented by the darker side, the darker colors. So the third rows and the fourth row. Is based on batch size equals 64, native TensorFlow training speed, and Kubeflow training speed comparisons. And the fifth and the sixth row is batch size equals 128. And compare the training speed. So if we put training jobs on Kubernetes using single GPU, then whether what kind of、uh, no matter the model you choose, no matter the batch size you choose, the training speed on this model the overhead can be controlled within three to five percent. Which means, in the single GPU training, the based on Kubernetes, the overhead can be eliminated. The overhead don't have too much, or it doesn't have too much influence. So when we're using distributed training, distributed training benchmark, we are still using TensorFlow CNN benchmark to do the experiment. And、uh, similar, we are benchmarking native TensorFlow training, and also distributed training on Kubernetes. So as you can see on the slide on your right hand side, this is the architect. We choose one parameter server, two workers, and each workers have two GPU, two P GPU per worker. And on the other hand, when we are doing the dispatch, we don't choose. Kubernetes default scheduler to do the dispatch. We use manual dispatch designate PS to make sure that the latency is low. As you can see, the result we've trained four model for Inception v3, AlexNet or ResNet. As you can see, the difference is not so huge. Because the training speed is very low on these four models. However, on ResNet 152, the latency is around five to ten percent.
So the overhead comes from internet latency. However, after our observation from CPU and memory, they require a low latency, and the latency is very low on CPU and memory, which means that in the distributed TensorFlow training, we can sense the impact from overhead. However, the kubeflow benefit is that kubeflow use machine learning and Kubernetes. A, the kubeflow lower the end-to-end -end machine learning deploy difficulties. So this kind of overhead is acceptable, can be tolerated. And when, it, when we are doing distributed training benchmark, we use manual dispatch because on the community, there is no mature solutions. Uh, there are other scheduler, uh, for example, based on Kubernetes open source kubebatch or Kube uh, Arbitrator or Huawei open source Persetum. Persetum. So those platforms trying to solve distributed training GAN scheduling issue. So if they can solve that, if they can solve distributed training's impact on internet and new resources, then I believe that in the future, distributed training overhead could maintain within 5 to 10 percent, which is tolerable. So this is the test bed. And, uh, the CUDA is uh, the TensorFlow is 1.10 version. CUBA is 9.0. You have CUD, DNN, the GPU version is GTX 1080 Ti, and we have kernel versions. We also use uh, Linux as our training operating system. So that is our test bed parameters. And based on this test bed, our experiment tells us that Kubeflow open source project can facilitate TensorFlow. And low, uh, although there are overhead, but it is tolerable and it can facilitate training, TensorFlow training. So we need those uh, learning stack open source programs to emerge in the future. So that is uh, the some of the contributors for our presentations, some advisors for our presentations. So now the floor is open for your question. Thank you.